At the heart of this dark history lies K.L. Auschwitz, the largest Nazi concentration and extermination camp in Germany. Here, more than 1.1 million men, women, and children were robbed of their lives in the most gruesome and inhumane ways imaginable. Welcome to a solemn moment in our collective past as we venture back in time to bear witness to the unimaginable horrors of the Nazi concentration camps. We pay tribute to the countless innocent lives lost and remember the unimaginable suffering they endured. As we embark on this emotional journey, please take a moment to like and subscribe to our channel to support our mission of remembrance and education. The world was shaken to its core when the Allied forces liberated the Auschwitz camps on January 27, 1945. They uncovered an appalling reality of mass murder that defied comprehension. Auschwitz I began as a prison camp, but the true depth of this nightmare was unleashed with the construction of Auschwitz II Birkenau. It was here that 1.1 million souls were mercilessly taken and their remains cast aside. As the staggering death toll came to light, it was the courage of survivors who bore witness to the unspeakable atrocities that exposed the full extent of the horror. It was during Hitler's reign as Chancellor from 1933 to 1945 that the terrifying plan of mass extermination was executed. Before Hitler, radical extremists had advocated for this course of action, which later became famously known as the final solution to the Jewish problem. Before the storm of World War II broke out, Germany was already operating several prison camps as detention centers for Jews, political dissidents, and others considered enemies of the Nazi regime. Little did the world know, however, that these camps were only the tip of the iceberg, a mere glimpse of the unspeakable horrors that were yet to come. With the invasion of Poland, the Nazis seized military barracks and converted them into detention facilities. Enter Rudolf Hess, the man behind the establishment of the infamous Auschwitz camp, who served as its first commandant. The camp's strategic location at the junction of 44 railroad lines made it a logistic dream for the transport of prisoners from all corners of occupied Europe. Initially, Hess was tasked with constructing a facility designed to dispose of the remains of those who had been executed or had perished. However, by May of 1942, a harrowing revelation surfaced. Three high-capacity ovens capable of incinerating 340 bodies in a single day were now being used to murder living prisoners. These chilling crematoriums would come to symbolize the sheer brutality and utter contempt for human life that the Nazi regime embodied. Undeterred by conscience, the Nazis pressed on with their monstrous plan, ultimately constructing five such death chambers. As we reflect on this dark chapter in history, it serves as a stark reminder of the depths to which humanity can sink and the importance of remaining vigilant against the forces of hatred and prejudice. In March of 1941, Heinrich Himmler paid a visit to the camp and saw its potential for even greater horrors. He ordered its expansion, resulting in the creation of Auschwitz II Birkenau, a mere stone's throw away from the original camp. Completed in October of 1941, Birkenau was a monumental upgrade from the first camp, which could hold only 15,000 prisoners. With its capacity now reaching over 90,000, Birkenau became the stage for some of the most appalling acts in human history. It was only the beginning for the Nazi regime as they imprisoned nearly 1.3 million individuals at Auschwitz. The vast majority, 1.1 million, were Jews, while the remaining 200,000, including non-Jewish Poles, Roma, Gypsies, homosexuals, Soviet prisoners of war, and those with mental disabilities. The sheer scale of this tragedy is almost unfathomable, and the depths of brutality inflicted upon these prisoners defy comprehension. The aftermath of Auschwitz serves as a chilling reminder of the atrocities committed within its walls. While the Soviet Red Army arrived, they found a haunting sea of shoes left behind by the victims, a poignant symbol of lives stolen by the Nazi regime. The prisoners arrived at Auschwitz crammed into cattle carriages, enduring horrific conditions only to be met with even greater terror. Upon arrival, they received triangular pieces of clothing with their inmate numbers stitched above them. By July of 1942, most of these sent to Auschwitz were of Jewish descent. Nazi doctors would examine the new arrivals, and those deemed unfit for work were immediately sent to take a bath in public restrooms. In a sinister twist, these baths were actually lethal showers, gas chambers in disguise. This chilling process targeted the most vulnerable, young children, the elderly, pregnant women, and the physically or mentally ill. 
Once inside the gas chamber, these helpless victims were subjected to Zyklon B, a deadly poison that would claim their lives. Perhaps the most heartbreaking aspect of this grim history is that many inmates were never registered in the Nazi records, making it impossible to grasp the full extent of the horrific crimes committed against society's most vulnerable and elderly. The colors of the prisoners' uniform served as a means of classification and identification. Political prisoners wore red triangles, German criminals wore green, prostitutes, gypsies, and Romas wore black, and homosexuals wore pink. Jews were forced to wear a yellow badge in the shape of a Star of David, further dividing the prisoners into separate groups. A letter sewn onto an inmate's clothing often indicated their nationality. This system laid the foundation for institutional racism within the camp, with non-Jewish inmates from various countries occupying the upper ranks and Jewish prisoners at the bottom. Those who survived the initial gassing faced a life of enslavement, where many succumbed to exhaustion, illness, and malnutrition, fighting a daily battle just to stay alive in the hellish landscape of Auschwitz. Life in Auschwitz was defined by a grueling daily routine that began before sunrise. For men, the day started at 4.30 a.m., and even earlier for women. The sound of the block superintendent ringing a gong singled the beginning of a day filled with labor and suffering, a never-ending cycle of physical and mental torment. The daily life in Auschwitz was both brutal and dehumanizing. The block superintendent would patrol the barracks using a stick to beat prisoners and harry them through their morning routines. The unsanitary conditions in the camp contributed to the spread of illness and disease. To keep the prisoners working, they were given a meager 500 milligrams of coffee substitute for breakfast. Following the first gong, a second one would call the prisoners to assemble outside and form orderly rows of 10 for counting. Forced to stand outside for extended periods, they would wait for the SS officers to arrive and conduct the head count. Only when every inmate was accounted for could the exhausting workday truly begin. The Nazi regime dictated every aspect of the prisoners' lives, down to their breaks and personal time. Even something as basic as toilet breaks were scrutinized and monitored. The midday meal consisted of a watery, often contaminated soup, while dinner was a meager 300 grams of inedible, moldy bread. Following a day of backbreaking labor, prisoners endured a second roll call where physical punishments like whippings and hangings were meted out for even the smallest of infractions. Fear was a constant companion, and if someone went missing, the others were made to stand during the headcount until the missing inmate was found, prolonging their already exhausting days. In the evenings, prisoners yearned for the comfort of letters from loved ones, but Jewish inmates were denied even the small solace and kept in the dark about their family's well-being. Many were forced to sleep in cramped, unsanitary conditions in wooden or brick cellars. The night brought its own horrors as the infamous Dr. Joseph Mengele, the Angel of Death, carried out his own cruel experiments on Jewish prisoners, including infants. The curfew gong only momentarily silenced the night's terrors, which persisted to haunt the prisoners. When the Soviet Red Army finally arrived at Auschwitz in 1945, they discovered around 7,800 sick prisoners, while another 60,000 were forced into a fatal death march, during which many lost their lives. The chilling events at Auschwitz will forever be etched into our collective memory as one of the darkest chapters in human history. The unimaginable suffering and brutal conditions that prisoners endured are beyond comprehension. It serves as a stark reminder of the importance of standing against hatred and oppression and never forgetting the sacrifices made by those who suffered and perished in this tragedy. May we honor their memory by spreading love, compassion, and peace in the world. Are we truly doing enough to ensure that such unspeakable horrors never happen again? Share your thoughts in the comments below and let's keep the conversation alive. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on the powerful stories and insights we bring to you.